Hey everybody, this is Kyle, and here's another episode of What Can We Learn About Songwriting From? And the artist of focus here is Johnny Thunders, and this was suggested by Max Washington Songs. So thank you, Max. Like I said before, be like Max and suggest an artist or a song for me to take a look at in this series. So Johnny Thunders was one of the original members of the New York Dolls, uh, early 1970s glam rock. So I'm going to take a look at the song Trash and see what I can learn about songwriting and creativity. And I mentioned creativity for all those people watching this video. They're going to comment like, oh, great video. I don't know anything about music or songwriting. Well, the creativity aspect is for you. I'm not sure if I've ever heard this song, so I looked up a little information about it. I'm going to watch it. I'll probably exclude it from the video for copyright reasons, but looking at this, uh, the song begins with a chorus, and looking at the lyrics to the song, it looks like it's a pretty simple song, so I'm not totally sure what to expect here. I've heard the New York Dolls before. It's been a while. Their sound isn't going to be surprising to me, but this particular song might be. Let me take a listen to this song and we'll talk a little bit more about it. <laughs> okay, I am loving this song. This song makes me think of when I first heard punk rock in the 80s. I was in high school and just falling in love with the simplicity, the, the rawness, the, hey, we don't know how to play our instruments, but dang it, we are just going to have a song and have fun. And that energy is something I always enjoyed about punk. Let me know in the comments if you know this song. Okay, so talking about the basic structure of a song. The song is almost a blues structured song. It's a loosely blues structured song. Now, a lot of people that don't know music, when you hear that, you're going to think, oh, this is not some Muddy Waters, some B.B. King type stuff. No, there's a difference between a blues form and a blues genre. A blues form means that it uses uh, certain chords, puts them in a certain order, and this song does this there's a good chance that most of the music, like especially pop or rock or anything like that, anything with music to it, there's a very good chance it's in a blues form. Now this song is remarkably simple, but that's the point. That's the strong part of it. And what I liked about this song, hearing it and my initial reaction to it, is it's repetitive. In today's world, you have hyper-pop, and you have this concept in songwriting and music that, that lyrics should have an earworm quality. It, it sticks with you. And the way that this song repeats, trash, won't pick it up, take them lights away, and repeats the word trash, I could see that being a hook. Now, I haven't seen a whole lot of live footage of the New York Dolls or anything like that, or, you know, know a lot more about them. The idea of a hook in music. The hook is where an audience sings along and the chorus is something different. Like I said before, a chorus is often the title of the song and repeated. You got that word trash. And again, you got that. As I'm editing, I thought I should add that the word trash is a hook. They're talking about fans. They're talking about, hey, you come to a New York doll show, you dress up, you do something different, you're unusual. People are going to call you trash. So that word becomes this badge, you know, kind of like Slipknot fans call themselves maggots, ICP fans, juggalos, etc., etc. And you have that great old school rock strategy, the, the chorus, the title, and the hook. It's all the same thing. And think of it like this. If you are trying to sell something, it's repetitious. It's simple. Anybody can jump in and sing along. And because of those things, it's predictable. It drives your point home. You could walk away after hearing a song one time and someone say, hey, what was the song you were just listening to? And you say, I don't know. It says trash over and over. Hmm. I wonder what that song is called. That is a brilliant move. Now, in basic terms of creativity, if you are trying to make an idea infectious, those ideas of simple repetition, that is very strong. Let's take a closer look at the song. I didn't like what I said about the lyrics whenever I was editing this, so here is some other thoughts. Looking at it, the lyrics, they're trying to express in a passionate way just being alive. Say things like, 
don't ask me if I love you. And it's like, leave me alone. I, I don't know if I love you or not. It's like, I don't want to get attached. There's all kinds of implications with that line. And then you get some more on this idea of love. I don't know if I do. It's the way I feel with you. And you just get this immature, this young adult point of view on what relationships are like. And that speaks to people. It's exactly like what music is doing today. Go on TikTok, you hear song clips, hear what people are using over and over. What is trending? It's the same thing. If you're still with me in the video, in the comments, just type lover boy because that's part of the song too. And you get the idea. The, uh, the band was in the studio. They had the basic idea for a song. It was a minute long. Someone said, hey, we can't sell a minute long song. <laughs> you guys got to make it longer. And there's a lot of stories like that when you look into the history of how cool songs were made and recorded and things like that. A band would walk in with like a minute and a half of magic and someone said, yeah, we need at least two minutes, two and a half minutes. <laughs> and so they had to figure out how do we make this magic multiply? And very similar to how I imagine David Bowie in the 70s going into the studio with some ideas for a song. The band is jamming and he does the words. He realizes, hey, we need some more content here. And you start to riff. You start to improvise a little bit. And you fall into this fun, repetitious cycle. I think the real lesson here to learn from Johnny Thunders and this song is you can be very simple. You don't have to overcomplicate a message in order for it to be successful. You don't need to make things be overly abstract, overly poetic. You can be completely in the moment. And whenever I hear this song, and I might be totally wrong, it's like I'm transported in time. It's like I get to go back to early 70s New York. I get to feel the energy of what it was like to be there. That's entirely different than getting like a narrative description. And that's why I think the value of music and looking at songwriting is this aspect that you can be transported. And I think that's what is very cool about songwriting and other types of creativity is the ability to transport the audience, a viewer, a listener, etc., to transport that person from one place in time to another place in time. It doesn't need to follow any rules and that's the coolest part. If you have an idea for an artist or a song for me to take a look at in this series, please let me know in the comments. Quick thank you to my patrons for making videos like this possible and I will see you next time. Throwing this on at the very end so only diehards will catch it. I keep thinking about having like a little online class and by a little something for like five to ten people, like a Zoom session or something like that, talking about songwriting, sharing ideas and things like that. Let me know if you'd be interested. My email is on my about tab and send me a message. Let me know.